This project here is very near and dear to my heart. Just over two months ago, Hurricane Ian came in and devastated Fort Myers, Florida, my hometown. When I saw this paper by Mint by Michelle, I just knew I had to have that paper and I needed to create something. I am calling this piece Florida Strong. I was so excited to get started with this piece. Of course, the first thing I did was I gave it a good washing and then I removed the handles. Seeing that it was very slick or shiny, I decided to go ahead and apply a primer. Here I use Dixie Bell's Slick Stick. I like to leave the drawers in when I'm painting because it helps me get to the sides or the parts that are exposed when the drawers are in. But make sure after you do this, you go ahead and you pull the drawers out and you could then paint the sides and let them dry so they do not dry shut. Next, I went ahead and laid it down. I probably should have waited till I got my second coat of white paint on, but nonetheless, I went ahead and painted it, let that dry. I can't tell you how excited I was to use the Mint by Michelle paper. These palm trees are so beautiful. And if you've ever been to Southwest Florida or anywhere in Florida, you know what palm trees look like on the beach. I liked that the paper is black and white instead of colorful. It just symbolizes something different for me, especially why I created this video. I lined the paper up and then I used a piece of chalk to mark where I wanted to cut. They don't butt up perfectly, so I had to kind of try to figure out the best way that it would look on the dresser without having too much of an obvious overlap. Fortunately for me, I wasn't hurt as hard as some were with the hurricane. However, I know my sister was hit pretty hard. She lost almost everything in her house. Unless it was above five feet, it was a total loss. While I'm creating this dresser and seeing these palm trees, it also reminds me of her husband's job. He basically, his job is on the beach, on the causeway where the bridge was taken out. I didn't really understand how bad my sister's house was until I went over there. I was in total shock when I pulled up to her driveway. I got out of the car and immediately just started to cry. I wasn't prepared. For the next seven weeks, I had her and her family living with me. It was quite an experience, but it only made us grow closer. Nothing like having eight dogs in your house at one time. It was so moving on how the community all came together and is still together. Strangers helping strangers, ripping out drywall, clearing brush from their yard, moving cars, anything and everything you can do for somebody people were doing. I can't tell you how many people we saw come from other areas down here to help Southwest Florida. Though it's two months later, there are constant reminders of what Hurricane Ian did. As I drive to the shop every day, there is still hurricane debris on the sides of the roads. As you drive down major highways or major roads where there's businesses, you can see the signs are still blown out. Traffic lights are still dangling, crooked, turned sideways. Southwest Florida has a long way to go. These are some of the reasons why I wanted to create this dresser. So continuing on with the process. As I'm applying the paper with some decoupage medium, I'm placing the paper on, putting on only a little decoupage medium at a time because I'm trying to have as many or as, as least amount of wrinkles as I can. So I'm also trying to apply the decoupage medium in a nice even fashion and then pushing the paper down nicely and then using my brayer.
However, ha if you've ever decoupaged before, especially paper, the struggle is real. You know how difficult it is to have a perfect laydown of the paper without wrinkles. Some wrinkles are fine, but sometimes when they're too big or too clunky, they just don't look good. All right, so after I got the paper laid down, I went ahead and got a very sharp X-Acto knife to start cutting the edges of my paper so I could open the drawers and let them dry. And then I can go back and make sure that I have all the edges of the paper down on each drawer. And because you don't always get a perfect cut or a perfect laid down piece of paper, I generally will put on another coat of the decoupage medium, let that dry, and then I'll come back with a sander, like a 220 grit along the edges of the dresser just to make sure that there's no paper that's going to catch on the drawer above it or beside it and cause it to have that sound. If you've decoupaged before on a dresser, you know that sound. We hear the paper just go, and we don't want that. So I always go back, seal it, and then sand it. Okay, this is a first for me. I know a lot of people do it, but I can honestly say that I ironed my dresser. <laughs> Just kidding. So see all these wrinkles? This was after I put the paper on. This, this is unacceptable to me. I guess I just didn't do something right. So after giving it a firm ironing, you can see here the difference. A lot of the wrinkles have been pressed down and they're not as visible. So I highly recommend ironing your decoupage paper after it's dry if you don't like your wrinkles. So here's a shot of the before dresser and here is the after. I am absolutely in love with this Florida strong dresser. What do you think?